Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and in this tutorial we are going to perform a random forest classification using remote or census. In particular, we are going to classify a Copernicus Sentinel-2 image. This tutorial assumes that you already have watched the basic tutorial of remote or census. So the first step is to install remote or census. We are using Google Colab, uh, that is the uh, Google service uh, that allows for using a Jupyter uh, interface. And you should notice that uh, all the other required dependencies of remote or census are already installed in uh, uh, Google Colab. Uh, we can uh, use this command pip install remote or census. And of course, please refer to the user manual for installation on other systems. And after a few seconds, we can see that the remote or census is installed. And next, the, we need to start a remote or census session. In particular, this defines the number of processes and the available RAM uh, that are available in the system. So first, we uh, import remote or census. And next, we use this command, remote or census uh, dot session, to define the number of processes and available RAM in Google Colab. So we click run here. And after a few seconds, we have uh, created the remote or census session. So now we need to prepare input data that we are going to use in this tutorial. Uh, the first step uh, will be to create a band set using an image. Uh, the second, we are going to load a training input. And the third step is to perform the random forest classification. So first we are going to define a band set. Uh, that a band set is an object that includes uh, information about the bands, such as the file path or the spatial and spectral characteristics. And in this tutorial, we also define a working directory just for using the input and output paths. So uh, now we need to create a band set. In particular, uh, in this tutorial, we are going to use a, a preprocessed uh, Copernicus Sentinel-2 image, a subset that, that is already preprocessed, and that includes the following uh, bands from band 2 to band 12, as you can see in this table. In this tutorial, we are going to download this subset of the Copernicus Sentinel-2 image. Of course, uh, uh, Remote or Census includes several tools for downloading Copernicus Sentinel-2 images and um, other satellite images. So we click this button. So this part of code is just for downloading this uh, subset uh, that is a zip file and also extract the bands in the working directory. We can click this button here to display uh, RGB composite of the image. So now we are ready to create uh, the input band set. Uh, first, we create a band set catalog with this command rs.bandsetcatalog, which will include all the band sets. So we click run here. And now that we have created a catalog, we can create uh, our first band set using this command catalog.createBandset. The parameters of this command are uh, few. In particular, we need the parameter paths that defines a list of paths to the bands, but also we can use a directory of preprocessed files that is a home sample data in this tutorial. And in this case, we are going to use all the bands included in this directory. Second parameter is band set number that sets explicitly the number of the band set as one. And the final parameter is wavelength, uh, which is generally a list of values uh, for the center wavelength of each band. But we can also set uh, uh, the parameter as Sentinel-2, as a string here, uh, which automatically defines the Sentinel-2 values for each band in the band set. And also the command uh, that we can use here is the function catalog get1 that allows to get the first uh, uh, band set in the catalog and use the function print to also print the bands in the terminal. We can click run here and as you can see we have created our band set and we have printed here the name of the band set and all the bands in a table as you can see here. We can see for instance the path of the first band here. We can also check uh, the name and the wavelength of the first band as you can see here and also other characteristics of the bands, such as top, left, and other coordinates. And the same, of course, for all the bands in the band set. So the second step is to load the training input here. 
in particular we are going to use the array polygons that are uh, used in the training of the algorithm. Each polygon corresponds to a class or a macro class. In this tutorial we uh, follow this uh, classification of classes, in particular water with the class 1, built up with the class 2, vegetation with the class 3 and soil with the class 4. Of course for the creation of this polygon uh, we can use JS software uh, such as the semi-automatic classification plugin for QJS and in this tutorial we're going to download an already available uh, training input that I've prepared here at this link. So we can click this button here to uh, download the training input to Joe package. And next we are going to open this training input to Joe package using the spectral signature catalog that is a class of uh, remote or census. And in particular, uh, this allows to create uh, the spectral signatures related to a specific band set. So the first command is to get the first band set, as we have already seen here, catalog get one. And then we are going to create uh, an empty spectral signature catalog with this function here, specifying that the parameter band set is the band set one, the band set one object. Now that we have created our uh, spectral signature catalog, we can import the training input, the Joe package that we have downloaded here. In particular, with this function, import vector, the parameter file path defines the path to the input file, with, that is the Joe package in the working directory here. And next, we define a few parameters uh, related to the fields of the vector. In particular, macro class field defines the name of the field corresponding to the macro class ID in the vector. Macro class name defines the corresponding macro class name field in the vector. Class field that defines the corresponding field to the class ID in the vector. And class name field that defines the corresponding field class name in the vector. And of course, uh, these names uh, should be adapted to the training input file. And as you can see here, we define these parameters in the function import vector here. And we click run. After a few seconds, uh, each polygon in the Joe package will be imported in the signature catalog and it will become a ROI, a region of interest in the catalog that will be used for the training of the algorithm. Good, now we can perform the random forest classification. Basically, the random forest classification is one of the classification algorithms available in remote or census. The tool for classification is band classification uh, that has the following parameters. Input bands, that is the parameters that accept uh, a list of input raster paths or also a band set number or a specific uh, band set object. Uh, of course, we also need to define the band set catalog that contains the band set. Of course, in case the input bands uh, is a band set number. Spectral signatures, that is the parameter for defining a spectral signatures catalog containing, uh, of course, the training input uh, polygons. The macro class parameter, that is a Boolean parameter. And if it's true, uh, the training will be evaluated on the macro class ID field and if false, the training is evaluated on the class ID field. The output path that defines the output of the classification raster. Also, there is a, the optional parameter save classifier that, uh, if true, defines also uh, an output file for the classifier to be loaded uh, later uh, without the training input for a new classification. Classification confidence is an optional parameter and if it is true, uh, basically we calculate a confidence raster for uh, each pixel we have uh, a value from 0 to 1 corresponding from low to high confidence. 
Then there is an uh, algorithm name, uh, that is the parameter that defines uh, uh, the algorithm used for classification. For random forest, this parameter can be set as RF, as you can see here. But of course, there are also other algorithms that we can see here, such as minimum distance, maximum likelihood, spectral angle mapping, random forest one versus rest, subtle vector machine, multilayer perceptron, and multilayer perceptron using PyTorch framework here. We'll see uh, this in other tutorials. Mm, regarding random forest, we can see here the parameters. Uh, in particular, uh, we have the parameter RF max features that defines the number of features considered in node splitting. It can be none uh, and all the features are considered. Uh, available options also are uh, SQRT for the square root of all the features or an integer number or a float defining the fraction of the, all the features. And possibly the most important parameter is the RF number trees that defines the number of trees in the forest. And this is useful for defining the complexity of the model. So usually the more uh, is the better, but of course, uh, increasing the number of trees also increases the time for classification. And another parameter is a RF mine sample split that defines the minimum number of samples required to split an internal node. So we can see here the function rs dot band classification. The first parameter input bands that we set one, which refers to the band set catalog that we define here. So we are selecting the first band set in this catalog. Here, the parameter spectral signatures. In particular, we are using the signature catalog object that we have created before, related to this catalog. We also define the macro class uh, uh, parameter as true to use the macro class ID values. We define here the output path that we are saving uh, the output classification raster in the working directory here. We also set classification confidence as true to get the confidence raster. Of course, the algorithm name, in this case RF for random forest. The parameter RF number trees that we set 500 as the number of trees. And we also set RF mean sample split as two. And now we can click run to start the classification. First, it performs uh, the training of the algorithm. You can see here that the algorithm is fitting the input data. Of course, this could take a few minutes depending on the computer and the input data. And after a few minutes of processing, and you can see here the output messages of the algorithm, we have completed the classification here. We can click this button to display the output classification. As you can see here, the class is water, built up, vegetation, and soil. So we have classified our input uh, Sentinel-2 image, of course, a subset. And we can also display the confidence raster. Uh, that is a raster displaying for each pixel a value from 0 to 1, uh, corresponding to the confidence of the classification algorithm. And we can use this raster, of course, to check the quality of the classification at the pixel level. We can click this button to display the confidence raster here. And we can see the values from 0 to 1. As you can see here, the dark and blue pixels have quite a low confidence, so are probably classification errors. And the other values, as you can see, has the 0 0.2 uh, of confidence, so pretty low. And we have also, uh, corresponding to these pixels here, so we should uh, probably check the input data, in particular the training input, to uh, collect new polygons over these areas and improve the classification. So the last step is to close the remote or census session using this command, rs.close. And we have performed the random forest classification. Thank you for watching.